Josef Pushka took to the stand again on Friday in the trial in which he is accused and denies the murder of Ashling Murphy in Tullamore on January 12th of last year. So let's find out what he had to say for himself. Frank Graney is our courts correspondent. Morning, Frank. Good morning, Will. What is Mr Pushka's version of events? Well, in a nutshell, he claims that he was um, trying to help Ashley Murphy after she had been attacked by a man, uh, a man who had also stabbed him along uh, the Grand Canal in Tullamore on the 12th of January last year. He said that he has no idea why he was attacked by this man. He said he didn't know the man. He said he didn't know uh, the woman who came upon the scene either. Uh, he said this man just pulled a knife on him somewhere between uh, the Digby Bridge and the N52 flyover while he was out cycling his bike. He claimed the man threatened to kill him and that he stabbed him a number of times in the stomach. And in relation to Ashley Murphy, he said that a woman, again, that he didn't know, uh, came on the scene while he was being attacked by this man. He said that she said something to um, his attacker, and he claimed that they then appeared into the bushes. He said that he heard shouting. He went over to see what was happening. And when he did, he claimed he saw the man attacking her. Uh, he told the jury on Friday that he shouted at this man, and that when he did, the man came towards him. Uh, so he um, backed off. And he said at that point, the man then ran off down the canal. And when he did, he said he went over to the woman. Uh, he said that she was he, she was injured, so he tried to help her. She was uh, down in a ditch. He said he was sinking into that ditch. He, he said he stayed with her, but that he became... He was quite scared. He was scared that the man would come back. He was keeping an eye on the towpath to see if he would come back. And he said that he became quite stressed. Uh, so he decided to leave um, down the fields. And after leaving this injured woman in the ditch, he said that he was going through some bushes in the direction of Tullamore Town when he said that he started to feel really unwell. Uh, so he said he uh, decided to go into a small ditch in the fields. He said he couldn't continue anymore. He stayed there for some time. And he told the jury he then made his way to a friend's house. He claimed that he had lost consciousness in that ditch. He was there for a few hours. He said he must have been there for a few hours because when he regained consciousness, he said it was dark outside. Uh, he said he went to this friend's house, he asked for a lift home, this man did drop him home, he was living in Mukla at the time, uh, which we heard was about eight kilometres from um, the scene where he is alleged to have murdered Ashling Murphy. And from there he said that he went to Dublin with his cousin and his parents, they went to his parents' apartment in Crumlin. Um, the next morning he described being in severe pain, uh, unable to move. Uh, he said an ambulance was called for he was taken to St. James's Hospital where he said that he couldn't recall whether he spoke with some male detectives. The, in relation to that, the jury has already heard that um, he is said to have made admissions in relation to the murder of Ashley Murphy while at St. James's Hospital. Uh, but in his evidence on Friday, he refused to accept that he killed her, and refused to accept that he had harmed her in any way and insisted uh, that he didn't harm her that day. Now, of course... He's giving all of this account to uh, his defence. What happened when he was cross-examined? Well, as soon as Ms Anne-Marie Lawler, the prosecuting barrister, took to her feet to cross-examine Mr Pushka, she uh, straight out accused him of lying uh, to the Gardaí on a number of occasions, specifically in his parents' apartment when they called with paramedics on the morning of the 13th of January this was the day after he's alleged to have murdered Ashling, And when that was put to him, he agreed that he had told lies to those Gardaí. He also agreed that he lied to Gardaí in hospital uh, later that day after he'd been admitted to St. James's in Dublin. And when he was when it was put to him that he lied to Gardaí after his arrest and while being interviewed at Tullamore Garda Station on the 18th and the 19th of January last year, he said, yes, it could be, but that was not my intention. Um, Ms Lawler asked him if he was now saying that he was a witness to murder. He said yes. Uh, she accused him of fleeing to Dublin and of deliberately shaving that night uh, to change his appearance, and he refused uh, to accept either of those accusations. And in relation to what Ms Lawler had described as his new story, uh, she accused him of concocting yet another set of lies for the jury, and in response to that, he said, everybody has an opinion, but that's what I remember. He was asked if he was in the habit of following women around Tullamore, and this related to some CCTV footage that has already been shown to the jurors, where the prosecution claims that he was following um, a woman called Beata Barovska initially, until she went into Tesco, and he is accused of doing a U-turn on his bike and going back towards the town where 
He's accused of following another woman, Anne-Marie Kelly, who gave evidence to the jury earlier in the trial. She uh, described a man cycling slowly behind her. She felt this man was following her, uh, that he stared at her, at her in an intimidating way, and she claims that she saw him again down along the canal at about quarter past two that afternoon. And when that was put to Mr Pushkin in the witness box on Friday by the prosecuting barrister, he said... It's not like that. I have a wife at home and have no reason to follow women. Um, Ms. Lawler also asked him if he had had memory problems all his life. Um, and to that he said, I have a feeling that I do have a problem. Uh, very often it happens that I forget things, but I've never spoken to a doctor about it. He was asked what happened to his clothes, the clothes that he was wearing um, at the canal that afternoon. He said that they were burned at home. Um, he was asked if he had asked people to burn his clothes. He said he had. In relation to that con confession that he's alleged to have made at St. James's Hospital to uh, Gardy, who had travelled up from Tullamore to speak with him, he said that he didn't remember. Um, and again, he was asked if he was lying about his memory of events uh, of what happened in the hospital. And he insisted that he was telling the truth about what he remembered and said it wasn't his fault that he couldn't remember. It was put to him by uh, Ms. Lawler that he has in fact no problems with his memory and that he does remember making uh, that confession and he said i know that i have problems with memory with remembering certain things this happens quite often this is not a lie i'm telling the truth and in terms of his claim that he was trying to help ashley murphy that afternoon uh, he was asked if he could tell that she was dying and again probably worth noting at this point will that the evidence that was heard in relation to this Ashley's dying moments um, may be distressing to some listeners because Mr. Pushka said that he could tell that she was dying and he said that he was trying his best to help her uh, but that he said he said that he had no medical experience. He was asked if he just stayed there and watched her die and he said that he left after a few moments when he realised he couldn't help her. Uh, he was asked if he had waited until she died. He said that he hadn't. Um, he was asked if he had stopped helping her before she died and again he said that when he saw that he couldn't help her he left. And he was asked at that point when he realised, when he said that he realised he couldn't help her and that he left, he was asked, and you went and hid in the ditch for four hours. And he said that he didn't hide, that he had no strength or power to continue. And that's why he went into the ditch. Uh, the barrister then put it to him that he wasn't actually trying to help her and that there was no other man and that he was the one who stabbed her in the neck. And he insisted that it wasn't him. He said it was strange uh, that they found uh, his DNA under her fingernails because he said that he uh, remembered her wearing gloves. And then I suppose just to wrap up um, her cross-examination of him on Friday afternoon, Ms. Anne-Marie Lawler put it to him that he had lied consistently in the investigation. And while Mr. Pushka accepted that um, he had lied in hospital and in the Garda station, he refused to accept that he had lied consistently throughout. And she put it to him then finally that he was lying again to uh, the juror on Friday. And in response to that, he said, I'm saying to you uh, what I remember. Mm. And does that conclude his evidence or do we expect him to take the stand again today? No, um, that concludes his evidence and the jury was told that they will hear from uh, one more uh, defence witness today. They weren't told uh, who that witness is or what evidence uh, they will present to the jurors when they reconvene in about an hour's time. And once that's done, provided the defence have no further witnesses to call, uh, we are then likely to have closing speeches the prosecution will be given the first opportunity to address the jurors for a final time uh, before the defence barrister, Mr Michael Bowman, is given an opportunity to deliver his closing speech. Then we'll have what's known as the judge's charge, where Mr Justice Tony Hunt will um, sum up the evidence heard throughout the trial and will also direct the jurors on the various legal principles that they will have to apply mm. uh, to their deliberations. It's hard to tell how long all of that will take, but you would expect it will be concluded by midweek this week. And once that's done, the only thing left for the jury to do will be to decide on the fate of Mr Pushka.